And let's talk about your game because sure. I know nothing about <laughs> developing video games and those types of challenges that go into creating it. Tell me you know, about kind of your role and all the different ways you had your fingerprints on it. Mm -hmm. And maybe let's talk about some of the challenges. And you know, if somebody else out there is interested mm -hmm. in doing this, yeah. you know, what they're going to have to go through. Sure. Well, uh, if you want to talk about challenges, Apple, that would be the biggest one. But uh, beyond that, is no. that pri proprietary software yeah. type thing? or it's Just working with the iTunes marketplace, there's a lot of barriers to overcome that come out of nowhere and you never could have known what to do to avoid them like in the first place. formatting place. and like just all kinds of things. They have, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get into a, sure, too uh, much of a, not a mudsling <laughs> nah, campaign here. It's, it's a little, um, obscure. Their process hmm. is a little obscure. When you think you're done, but you're not done. You're just passed on to the next office and then you go and you, a you lot think of you're done and then, yeah, exactly. But uh, beyond that, how I got started on the game, uh, originally they wanted me to design the graphics. Uh, and since it was a Western, I was like, hey, let's do watercolors. So let's yeah. do the whole game, you know, with old watercolor Western style paintings. Yeah. And do the characters that way and everything else. And since they wanted it to tie into the movie and really be an advertisement tool to, to sell the movie, I took scenes from the movie and, uh, and painted stills. And oh, then wow. we cross-faded the stills and we had the actors, you know, doing the audio and getting the audio was challenging because just the the timing of a movie is different than the timing of an app or a video game. Oh, right. Sure, sure. attention span. So whenever you're saying something and you're drawing it out really long for the screen, it doesn't work for a video game because sure. you've already lost your audience. Yeah, let's go. So I had to go and re-record all the actors, one of which lives in London. So we how did you do that? With Skype, uh, he does voiceover work and stuff. So you get like the quality that that you need. And well, you he want? does voiceover work, so he had a microphone uh, and okay. set up, and he recorded into that okay. at his own place. But there still is a difference because there's a difference audio quality from a, something that you record in a flat in London, as opposed to a like sound stage or sure. a choir, a whisper room or something like that. Sure, so, you know keeping everything, quality controlling everything, and trying to keep everything, you know, on the up and up, that's probably the most difficult with such a small team. Yeah, and they're the actors from, the, oh, <laughs> you're the team. So you run in the show, pretty much. I mean, you're yeah, steering our the show. Our uh, programmers are uh, U Creative. We're using U Creative out of uh, Ohio. Fantastic team. And uh, they're programming the game. But other than programming and a little bit of sound editing and video editing i've been responsible for everything else so it's got character design and script i mean well that was yes story. script adapting script for for the game yes uh, i did that uh no character design because you know we used the movie as a pretty okay one-to-one -one template for everything but you did illustrate i did the, i painted basically everything. the characters from the movie yeah. into the game yeah and everything you see in front of camera is something that i i painted wow uh, which was really cool to see how that would come together and if it would come together and you know that's great and how close are you to being done now like we're very close since our release date is March no, or, uh, May 9th obviously May 9th May 9th, May 9th. Um, we're we're pretty close we're very close we are actually adding content right now is that a good or a bad thing? it's a good thing oh good so your head yes well we played the game and we're like you know what we want to give the players a little bit more for what they're, you know, for what they're going to pay. So we really modeled this after an old school NES game. Okay. So okay. like, it's like so a shooter. It's a shooter and it's a, you know, it's a touch shooter. So the, the guy will pop out almost kind of like whack-a-mole and then you'll shoot them. And the locations are all locations from the movie. That's and right. it's, it's kind of like Death Wish where, you know, you're seeking revenge. Yeah. Something awful happened. Yeah. You're tracking down the gang of outlaws that, uh, and um, those outlaws, and those outlaws, man. And so you'll have a, a shootout with each one of them at each one of the locations that happens in the movie. And then if you beat the game, um, if you beat the leader of the gang, Durango, mm -hmm. there'll be a little something extra. You'll unlock something. Uh, so there's an unlockable uh, little something extra. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this game is to promote the movie that's coming out. Exactly. All right. Well, tell me about the movie. What's is it's a Western theme. I've seen some of like the artwork, and yeah. I think you know you showed me a little bit of the demo before we met here today. Right. 
So tell me about the movie mm -hmm. and then what people are going to experience, you know, with the game. Well, what's great about the movie is it's a grindhouse western. It looks like an artifact from the 70s. Mm. Like if you were to see it on TV or to play, you know, yeah. to pop up, you'd be like, oh, I've never seen this one. Is, is Clint Eastwood in this one? Oh, no, he's not, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got uh, Ennio Marcone music in it. You know, you know, I don't know who that is. It's the guy who ashamed. did... I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I'm sorry, but I'm admitting it. He's the guy who uh, Quentin Tarantino gets his gets him to do his uh, nice. westerns, Django and Chain. Yeah, he may have had him in the Hateful Eight. I can't remember, but yeah, but he's he did all of uh, a fistful of dollars, a few dollars more. Yes, Once Upon a Time in the West. And, yes, and so that. he pretty much is like your go-to. Yeah, he's the guy who made the western that. Doo -doo -doo, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> like he made that. That's that's his thing. That's awesome. Uh, they went and filmed it in Spain. Uh, and they used the sets that they used for the good, the bad, the ugly, and all of these spaghetti westerns. Like, they're still out there standing. So it's like authentic It's as authentic Western. as you can get. They shot it on vintage stock. It's got film scratches all over it. It's got hairs in the film They actually gate. shot it on real film. Yeah, yeah. That, like, never happens yeah. anymore. Well, they used an old-school DP. You know, he went out there. He shot all these westerns. And then they dubbed the whole movie. They replaced the entire Man. soundtrack. So <laughs> every every sound, every voice, everything. So everybody's like, oh, yeah, I see it. We're over here. But those gruff voices. Yeah, that they how have, they used to be. How they used to and, do it. Yeah. Man, that's wild. I I used to be one of those people that thought, you know, shooting on film, film, I'm such an artsy person. But having worked in it enough now, like, you really do see the difference in just oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. The texture of everything and the the feel. You Digital's know? great for something to look slick, mm -hmm. you know, and commercial and this, that, and the other. But when you want texture and you want it to seem organic and have a you know hmm, a little feel to it, then nothing beats film. All right, so you illustrated this game. You've developed almost not every aspect, but you've basically <clears> been <throat> the one calling shots, moving the ball down the field. If you're somebody at home and you want to develop your own app, do you have any advice? Do you have any suggestions for how they can make it happen? Yeah. Um, first of all, you need money. <laughs> that helps. You need to finance it. So the average app, you know, is going to cost quite a bit. I'd say on the lowest to low, 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 low end, if mm -hmm. you want something that's going to play, you know, be playable and that Apple will accept, it's probably going to be somewhere between $25,000 to $50,000. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. To get it developed. Um, we've been developing ours for uh, over a year now. No kidding. And it's a simple app. Wow. You know, it's not uh, like a, lots of moving parts and things like that. Yeah. So if you're going to have something really, you know, intricate, well, start start simple. If it's your first one, start as simple as you possibly can. Uh, do it as streamlined as you possibly can. Start a crowdfunder, you know, um, have something to show in your crowdfunder, have some artwork, you know. Yeah. Demo it in any way you can. If you have a, a friend who's a flash animator, get them to animate what a scene would look like if you were able to program it, whatever you can. Just kind of get people inspired. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen it. It's a great app. I you know, played the demo. It was a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. So well done. Thank you. Very good job. I'm sure the trophy, what is it called? The treasure chest at the end of the rainbow <laughs> will be well worth it. Oh, it will. Trust me. And coming up very, very soon. Yes, it will. So good luck finishing and everything. Thank you, sir. And the one thing I want to know, because I didn't get this part in the game, is there like an old prospector anywhere? Because I just feel like every Western is an old prospector. You know, we've still got a month. You think Maybe if you need a voice, I can do like a guest chicken. Oh, yes. damn it, yeah. you know, it's, it's the dance. I need my really band, yo. Yeah, and Kyle. Exactly. I can do that. I think that's what our revenge western is missing. And I'm cheap. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, <laughs> sequel. Maybe for the sequel, if it doesn't make this one. That's true. But your your lady is in it, right? I mean, oh, she is. is. Yeah, Andy is uh, a voice in the game. Actually, she's not only a voice in the game, but I drew her into the game. Yeah, you drew her. She like yeah, pops she out. She pops out as a as a. Uh, I was playing it. She's like, oh, that's me. As that's a civilian me. Civilian character. You, you can't kill the civilian characters. Some of the perks of being a developer. Oh, yeah, I exactly. guess. I drew I'm myself sure. into the game too. I've got a little. Oh, do you really? Yeah. <laughs> do you? I'm a little like bar that? I'm a bartender. Yeah. Just move. Lester's Fixins. Lester's Fixins gummy fried <laughs> eggs. I can't wait to make breakfast for Andy tomorrow morning and, and pop these on her plate. Instead. Yeah. 
See, see how, cutting them. Like see how that, wrong, baby. See how that works for you.